Now then, how do? Welcome to a bit more Yorkshire Brass once again. It's David Hoyle with you with show number 234. Goodness me, 234 in our online YouTube series. We started this week with a request by Carl in Bolton. That was Folk Festival, written by Dmitry Shostakovich, arranged for brass band by Howard Snell and wonderfully played by the Williams Fairy Band. Thanks as always for getting in touch with your requests, your dedications and your lovely messages. We've had some real cracking stuff in, in this last few days on all three of those categories. The first march of the week we're going to Somerset to Tim. There's an interesting story behind this one in some ways. I, I interviewed the late great Jim Shepherd a number of years ago and I asked him if any piece of music caused him any problems. And Jim said one particular march caused him nightmares, and it was this one. And he said it was really difficult to get the fingering sorted out. It took him a few weeks, but he mastered it. Of course he did. Jim's playing here with the Black Dyke Mills Band, and Tim in Somerset has chosen this absolute cracking piece of music. Let's have a listen to the contester. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Black Dyke Mills Band with the great Jim Shepherd on Cornet there playing Tom Powell's March the Contester. Thanks to Tim in Somerset for requesting that one. And after the first march, of course, comes the overture. Now, this one is one of the oldest that we're ever going to play. This first was played back in 1791 on the 30th of September in Vienna. Ian and Jackie in Malton have been in touch to request this classic by Mozart. And the Foden's Band are playing for us here. The Overture to the Magic Flute. Thank you. 
Absolute magic, literally. 1791, the year when that was first played. The overture to the magic flute by Mozart was played there by the Foden's band at the request of Ian and Jackie in Malton. They sent us an email, yorkshirebrass at gmail.com, and that is the email address to use for any requests you might have. Our first solo of the week is also an email. This is from Kerry in Sheffield. Could I please hear the tenor horn solo, Makushla? I love this piece of music, and I really want to play it, but I'm not quite up to the standard as yet. I'm working at it. Good lass, good lass. Uh, this was written by Dermot McMorrow and Sandy Smith made the arrangement for Brass Band. Siobhan Bates is featured here on the tenor horn with the Black Dyke Band.
Good stuff. Lovely. From Siobhan Bates with the Black Dyke Band. Sandy Smith's arrangement of the music of Dermot McMurrah. McCushler was the title of that tenor horn solo and Kerry in Sheffield made that particular request. Thanks for joining me, David Hoyle, for this week's programme. You really have sent in some super stuff. Uh, we've got another little subject to talk about very shortly, but before we do that, Don in Leeds has chosen this little beauty by Eric Ball. I'd like to hear Petit Sui de Ballet, if at all possible, and preferably played by the Black Dyke Mills Band from a recording that I have. We can oblige on all counts, Don in Leeds. Here we go. It is indeed a lovely piece of music. Petit Sui de Ballet.
That's an absolute joy to listen to. Thank you so much to Don in Leeds for choosing it. The Black Dyke Mills Band playing Eric Ball's Petit Suite de Ballet. This was chosen as the fourth section test piece for the 2017 National Finals. Eight minutes of pure class from a master in Eric Ball. Mark in Bristol, Bristol to the rest of us, has been in touch to ask for our next piece of music. Mark asked, do I remember this particular cartoon programme? Do I? Absolutely. It started in 1979, I think, and then went into the early 1980s. It featured the G-Force. They were a five-member superhero team fighting to defend Earth and its space colonists from the threat of the planet Spectra. Philip Harper has made this arrangement of the music of Hoyt Crutin from that cartoon, and the Mosley Band are playing here for you, Mark, in Bristol. This is the theme music from Battle of the Planets. great arrangement by Philip Harper of the music of Hoyt Crutin from the cartoon series of the late 70s, early 80s. Battle of the Planets, Mark in Bristol with the request and the Mosley Band were playing there. Thanks indeed, Mark. Memories are very fond. I love that programme. Jason in York has been in touch with a series of yes or no questions. Can I just ask you stuff, Oily? And will you just answer yes or no and, and then put a bit of meat on the bones? I love your frankness says Jason, when you answer questions. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell it as I see it. Might not always be your idea of what's right, but I can only be honest, can't I? Here we go. Should you put ketchup on a hot dog? Uh, if you want, yes, from my point of view, absolutely. I would do ketchup and the mustard, followed by some perfect fried onions, and then the hot dog. And I don't mind the hot dogs in a jar. I, I very much like a proper sausage from a butcher's though and that's my idea of a perfect hot dog with a proper butcher's sausage is it acceptable to put pineapple on a pizza no it is not in my book i don't like pineapple and i don't think it'd work on a pizza anyway is a pie in a tin acceptable yes absolutely it is every now and again not every week um but I will, there is a rider on this one because i know the ones that you're referring to uh, and the answer is yes if you can open the damn tin they take some opening, don't they, those? Um, you know, the, you know the, the brand. It begins with an F and the second word begins with a B. Would siesta time work in the UK as it does in Spain, for example? Probably not, Jason, because the weather's not quite uh, as good as it is over there and people don't want to shop at 8 and 9 o'clock on an evening. The reason it works in Spain is because people go there on holiday and the shops stay open later. So I, the answer to that for me is no. Should homework from school be abolished? No, it shouldn't. 
in my book it gives young people a sense of being it gives them something to work towards we all did it and it for me it should absolutely continue more of these in a little while let's go to Aileen in Rothwell now uh, and this is our second solo of the week it features David Thornton on euphonium with the Black Dyke band and this is a lovely arrangement by Alan Fernie first time I've played this on the show you're gonna love it it's called my Lady Bothwell's Lament The lovely sound of David Thornton with the Black Dyke Band playing Alan Fernie's arrangement of My Lady Bothwell's Lament. Aileen in Rothwell, thank you very much indeed for your request on the email again, yorkshirebrass at gmail.com. Please do keep those requests coming in. If they are dated requests, we need a minimum, an absolute minimum of six weeks, preferably eight. We do have to plan and comply the shows musically well in advance. We are also now looking at Christmas. It's not far away. If you have Christmas requests, please get them in. The show will be recorded early. These are not live shows. And the sooner you get your request, and the more chance you've got.
thought of getting something in the Christmas program because we are always, always oversubscribed. John in rugby and another lovely little piece of music here which could be used as a test piece but so jolly and so listenable. This one goes back to the 1920s and Arthur Wood made the composition. The Hepworth Band are playing here. Thanks John in rugby for requesting three Dale Dancers. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Hepworth Band playing lovely music by Arthur Wood. That was Three Dale Dancers. Great stuff requested by John in Rugby. We're at the point of the programme now where we have a reflective piece of music and I've put this one in because I want to say many, many congratulations to the Flowers Band and Paul Holland on winning the National Brass Band Championships of Great Britain for the very first time. I think brass banding is brilliant and it needed that result and the Flowers Band have worked towards it. It proved that their second place at the British Open was no fluke and they played absolutely wonderfully on the day. This is music from a CD recently released by the Flowers Band. It's called Da Vinci and it's a lovely piece featuring the flugelhorn soloist Lauren Chin, written by Richard Taylor. Here we go, the national champions of Great Britain, the Flowers Band, are playing Tokyo Sunset. Lauren Chin on the flugelhorn playing Richard Taylor's Tokyo Sunset, the Flowers Band, with the accompaniment there. That music was from their new CD, Da Vinci. Paul Holland, the musical director, congratulations once again to the Flowers Band on their recent win at the Royal Albert Hall in the National Brass Band Championships final. If you want a copy of that CD, by the way, you can get one from worldofbrass.com. You can either download it from there or you can purchase the CD. And you can also sign on to wobplay.com, wobplay.com, if you want to stream it 
and stream all sorts, many thousands of other pieces of brass band music. We come to the end of the first part of this week's programme now with a, another cracking piece of music and another brilliant arrangement by Alan Catherine. I love his arrangements. I've played a number of them. Sellers College Brass are playing here for Helen in Huddersfield and the film's as old as I am. It was first broadcast back in 1966. The music of John Barry from that great film, Born Free. Excellent. Great film from 1966. Helen in Huddersfield requested Born Free by John Barry. Alan Catherill made that arrangement for Brass Band. They're always good arrangements when Alan does them. And the Sellers College Brass Group were playing there. That's halfway in this week's A Bit More Yorkshire Brass with me, David Hoyle. Show number 234 on YouTube this week. We continue now with more film music from five years earlier, in fact. 1961 was the year for this one, and Keith in Warrington has requested it, saying, I remember it well as a lad. Please could you play the music of Dimitri Tionkin, the guns of Navarone, the Cory band here to do just that.
Brilliant music from a great film from 1961. Keith in Warrington requested that one. The music of Dimitri Tionkin, the Cory Band, playing the guns of Navarone. Our second march of the week is another Salvation Army march played by the Black Dyke Band from one of their albums, World Class Marches of the Salvation Army. This one, written by Eric Leidson and Kevin Indroylston, has chosen Pressing Onward. Thank you. 
Eric Lydzen's March Pressing Onward, played there by the Black Dyke Band at the request of Kevin in Droylston. You may have noticed that all our solos today are all pretty similar in tempo terms. They're all sort of very, very nice and steady and all really listenable. Well, this one has got parts of it like that and then it starts to move a little bit. Andy in Methley has been in touch to say, could I please see a Matthew Alsop with the Hammond Saltair Band playing variations on home on the range. You certainly can, young Andy. Here we go.
might have had the slow start but by gum did that break into life in the later stages. Matthew Alsop on Euphonium with the Hammond Saltair Band playing variations on Home on the Range. Thanks to Andy and Methley again for requesting that piece of music. Let's go back to this list which Jason in York has sent in with yes or no answers. Should it be mandatory to retire at a certain age? Um, I don't think it should but having said that, in certain fields, I, I have a, an opinion that it might be more prudent to do so. And politicians uh, is one of those fields, particularly in America. I'm going to leave it at that. Are mismatched socks a fashion statement? If you like that kind of thing, then yeah, why not? If it works for you, and I know one or two people who do it, so go for it. It's not for me, but I've seen other people do it. Is a Jaffa cake a biscuit? Yes, it is. Definitely. Should casual Friday office attire include pyjamas? Are you being serious? Oh, no. Oh, just no. No, we can't, we can't have that. Do you like a cocktail to drink? I don't mind when I'm on holiday. When I'm overseas, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have a drink and enjoy it. But in the UK, no, I'm a beer drinker. Do you ever talk to yourself? Goodness me, yes. All the time. All the time. And it's all part of keeping myself going doing what i need to do and questioning every little thing that i do to make sure that it's right do you sing in the shower uh, no i don't actually to be honest i have my iphone other phones are available and i have brass band music on it and i just listen to things all the time looking for new music that the band can play and i can share with you on the on the program when you ask for me to pick certain certain you know certain choices i'm, I'm good for that um, have you ever lied about your birthday to get a free pudding in a restaurant? No, I haven't. But I know a lot of people who do. Especially when there's places where you've got that silly hat with the candles on. Uh, it, oh, it's his birthday. And it's his birthday every time you go in. Have you ever been on television? Yes, I have several times. Uh, I was talking about holidays for, for several years actually on TV before I came into brass banding. Uh, it is a bit daunting at first, but you get used to it. Do you like coriander? No. No, I hate the stuff. I love uh, Indian food and Asian food in general, but everything I order, I ask for it without the coriander. It's like getting food and then getting your aftershave and spraying it. It's disgusting stuff. Do you have a best friend? No, I do not have a best friend. I don't think it's healthy, but I do have a number of very, very close friends. A few more of these in a little while. Let's crack on with the next piece now. And we're going to the shows. Jan in Bingley. Is there a brass band arrangement of any of the music from the brilliant show My Fair Lady? There certainly is. This is a selection from My Fair Lady, arranged for brass band by Alan Fernie. And the music of Frederick Lover is played by the Tredega Town Band. <laughs> Bye. 
a selection from My Fair Lady, played there by the Tradiga Town Band. Frederick Lever's music, arranged for brass band by Alan Fernie and requested by Jan in Bingley. A 1964 American musical film, which was adapted from the 1956 stage musical, based, of course, on George Bernard Shaw's 1913 stage play Pygmalion. The character, Eliza Doolittle, was central to the film. She overhears the phonetics professor, Henry Higgins, as he casually wagers that he could teach her to speak English so well that she could pass for a duchess in Edwardian London. Or better yet, from Eliza's viewpoint, secure employment in a flower shop. Great stuff. Next up, another lovely, thoughtful piece of music arranged by Gough Richards. Heather in Home Firth has been in touch to ask this one to be played on the show. And the Stannington Brass Band are playing here. I say it again, this is absolutely beautiful. It's called Country Scene.
Country Scene by Gough Richards, played there by the Stannington Brass Band for Heather in Humferth. Lovely piece, isn't it? Really, really listenable. And it sets, I, I think, it's sort of a, a Sunday afternoon when you're out there in the countryside, sat in the car watching the world go by. It's just grand. And so we move from the sublimity of Country Scene to music by a legend. Jack in Barnsley, could you please play me any brass band music by Stevie Wonder. Well, this is a selection arranged by Frank Bernhardt's of his very greatest songs and played here by the Brighouse and Rastrick Band. It's just called Stevie Wonder in Concert.
Dominic House and Rastrick Band playing Stevie Wonder in concert, an arrangement for brass band by Frank Bernhardt's, and thanks to Jack in Barnsley for getting in touch with that one. We stay with the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band for our next request, which is by Marie in Huddersfield. This is music by Tom Turpin and another arrangement for brass band by Alan Fernie. I think this is a grand little number to include in any concert. It's called Harlem Rag March. <laughs> Turpin's Harlem Rag March was arranged for brass band by Alan Fernie, requested by Marie in Huddersfield and played there by the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band. Now, the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band have been in touch with the programme to advise us about their mass band's celebration concert, 150 of them. Yes, it's the 150th this time. Uh, fabulous concerts, these. And they're joined by the Fairy Band. They're making their 38th appearance, the Fairy Band, in the series. They've done more of these mass bands concerts than any other band. The concert is on Saturday the 26th of October next week at Huddersfield Town Hall, 7.15 in the evening. Dr David Thornton will conduct the mass bands and tickets are still available online from kirkleystownhalls.co.uk. The box office is on 01484 225 755 and you can pop in person Monday to Friday to Huddersfield and Dewsbury Town Hall box offices or Huddersfield Library in Civic Centre 3. They're always great nights. Do pop along if you can. We just heard from the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band twice and we're going to hear from the Williams Fairy Band. How's that for planning? Charlie in Manchester has chosen this week's test piece. This goes back to the early 1920s and some people call this the daddy of them all. Cyril Jenkins, the composer, and this is Life Divine. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Williams Fairy Band playing the music of Cyril Jenkins, Life Divine. This week's test piece was chosen by Charlie in Manchester. Let's finish this little list off that Jason in York has sent of yes or no answers. Have you ever won a contest in banding? Yeah, I've won a number of them and it's a great feeling. It's not a great feeling when you put lots of hard work in though and your work doesn't get recognised by adjudicators. I'll leave it at that. Do you have a favourite aunt or uncle? I don't actually because we never had any. Myself and my brother. Uh, both my parents were only children. We had great aunties and uncles. Are you afraid of spiders? Absolutely not. Not a problem to me. And can you keep a secret? Says Jason in York. I absolutely can if I need to. Not really a fan of secrets, but I could if I needed to. Penultimate piece of music. Time for this week's hymn tune. And Bob in Atherston has chosen this one. Written by Dan Emmett and played by the Upper Norwood Band of the Salvation Army. The Battle Hymn of the Republic is the more usual title, but on this recording, mine eyes have seen the glory. <laughs> This week's hymn tune, My Eyes Have Seen the Glory, the Battle Hymn of the Republic by Dan Emmett. The Upper Norwood Band of the Salvation Army were playing there and that was requested by Bob in Atherston. Bob emailed yorkshirebrass at gmail.com. You can do that for any requests for future shows, including Christmas. Mike and Susie have got the last piece on this week's programme and a cracking piece it is as well. They've asked for the Black Dyke Band to play the version of their favourite piece of music. That's absolutely no problem at all. Thank you so much from me, David Hoyle, for tuning in to a bit more Yorkshire Brass this week. I'll be back as usual next week with show number 235, but we'll leave you this week with a Rossini classic. Mike and Susie in Halifax have indeed chosen the Black Dyke Band and the finale from the William Tell Overture. See you next week. Thanks again. ta -ra.